Welcome back, Mr. Chamberlain here. Uh, today I wanted to go over some of the fuel components uh, for the uh, MP215 class, the fuel system and fuel injection class. Um, part of this is uh, to cover some of the Coast Guard and ABYC standard regulations. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I want to make sure you understand some of the critical ones. So to get started, the tanks have to be made of a certain material um, and they have to put pass Coast Guard regulations, uh, Code of Federal Regulations or CFRs. So on the tank, one of the standards and one of the regulations is you have to know who makes a tank, what it's made out of, what its capacity is, if it's aluminum like this, how thick it is, and what application it is. So it'll typically have a, a tag on it or a, um, a plate on it that will tell you that it has been certified for marine applications, um, whether it's plastic, uh, or it's a composite material, or it's aluminum, or it's stainless steel, something like that. Um, stainless is not very common. Aluminum is a lot more common in, in boats, um, and it has its pros and cons to it. So, um, To go on, we have our pickup. is inch and a quarter on most of your gasoline fuel tanks. Um, your vent would be uh, inch and five eight, or excuse me, five eighths of an inch. That would be the inside hose diameter and all of these fittings are rated on the hose size. So the hose is the inside diameter. So inch and a quarter hose, five eighths hose, and then whatever size uh, fuel pickup is in the tank. And I have one here that comes out of this tank. So this fitting will accept a quarter inch pipe thread. This is also a three eighths pipe, which will thread into the adapter that may be welded into the top of the tank much like this when it's welded into the top of the tank. Now, if the fuel in the tank is going to be above at any point where the fuel exits the tank, where if it's above where it goes into the engine, then you need an anti-siphon valve. If the fuel leaving the tank fitting, this fitting here, goes uphill to the engine the whole way, then you do not need an anti-siphon valve. You will commonly see anti-siphon valves in most tanks anyway. So, anti-siphon valves come in old style, come in brass, bronze, um, and the newer ones, a lot of them come in aluminum. So, if we look at um, the anti-siphon valve, this is an older one. I took it out of a, a boat and replaced it because it was uh, old and it was clogged, and you can see there's a check ball in it. So, what that allows is the fuel to come up out of the tank and go through the valve, push the ball off the seat, and you have to have enough vacuum from the fuel pump pulling the fuel out. In the event the fuel line goes below the top of the tank and it has a leak in the fuel line, you shut the engine off, that check ball will be held shut by a spring and it will prevent the fuel from siphoning into the bilge of the boat. That's why it's called an anti-siphon valve. There are tests for these. Most of the time, what I find with these is if you take them out and you test them, they fail. They have a little debris that gets in there or the seat on the check ball to the seat of the fitting leaks. Um, so most of the time, if I get into a situation where I die, I'm diagnosing a fuel starvation problem and I come up with this is the problem um, or I'm going to take it off and test it, if I don't know the age of it, it probably will leak, so I'll probably end up replacing it. They're not very expensive. So that would, depending on what the, the spud size or the nipple size is, depends on the size of the fuel line you attach. Most of the manufacturers are using 3 8 fuel line minimum. Um, and you get into older, smaller uh, four-cylinder engines, you might run into 5 16 but 3 8 is very common. At the bottom of the pickup, to get back to that, the bottom of the pickup could have a screen on it, which is called a rock screen that is in the ABYC standards. A lot of times you won't see that on gasoline engines because of your fuel water separator. Um, on diesel engines, you may see it. So how far off the bottom of the tank would this fitting be? And maybe a half an inch. So it's important that this is manufactured by the tank manufacturer because it has to be at the right height. All fuel tanks are rated for 5% expansion which means when you fill up the top of, to the top of the tank, when you fill this up, this will go down inside the tank a certain percentage. So when you fill it up, the fuel will stop going into the tank and it will come out the vent. 
That way you have an expansive range of 5% so the fuel won't keep going out the vent. Um, on the tank as well, you have a sending unit. I have a sending unit taken out of the other tank here so you can see it. It's very simple, it has a float and it is basically a variable resistor. So if you wanna test it, take a multimeter, put it on ohms, put it on the center stud, put it on the housing, and raise the float to see if you have a constant and smooth change in the resistance. Most of the sending units are based on 240 volts, uh, excuse me, 240 ohms. Um, if you have dual stations on one gauge, or you have two gauges for one tank, then you would have 120 ohm because you have to drive both gauges. Same thing goes with oil pressure and uh, fuel, I mean, excuse me, uh, temperature. From the tank going up to the engine, you may have a mechanical fuel pump on an older boat like this. If you have a newer model, you're gonna have fuel injection, you're gonna have electric fuel pump. So these will bolt into the engine and you'll have your input, inlet and outlet and you also have this fitting on an old style uh, fuel pump, which will go up to the intake or into the carburetor. This is a sight tube. So in the event that the diaphragm in here wears out, ruptures, fuel can't come up and go into the bilge of the boat. It has to be drawn up into the uh, engine itself. So this makes this a marine fuel pump. It has to have that fitting on it. If it's an automotive fuel pump, it'll just be open or it'll be blocked off. You may also have an older style fuel pump that actually has a filter built into the housing. So you could loosen this up, take this out, and there'll be a filter in here. And some of these will actually mount upside down on the engine. So it depends on what the manufacturer is. All right, I think that wraps up the basic uh, introduction to it. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me.